hello everybody welcome back to my channel and welcome to my naked readathon oh my god i can't talk welcome to my naked readathon <laughs> welcome to my naked readathon recommendations video where i have the recommendations for y'all i'm so excited just know that this video is going to be very indie black romance heavy because as y'all know i am obsessed with indie black romance and personally i feel that indie black romance is the best of black romance right now like if we're just going to keep it real and honest. So if you have not discovered the indie authors I'm going to be talking about, I don't know where you've been. You certainly haven't been on my channel because I can't stop talking about these authors. So without further ado, let's begin. So for prompt number one, Versace on the floor, read your favorite, um, read a black romance with your favorite trope. I highly recommend Christina C. Jones, period. Yes. She is the queen, and she writes across all genres. If you're looking for a sports romance, well, we'll hold off on that because that is actually one of the prompts. But if you're looking for an office romance, she's got you. If you are looking for a friends to lovers romance, she's got you. If you're looking for a nice contemporary that takes place in a small town and even involves a vineyard, she's got you. If you're looking for something grittier, edgier, uh, more sci-fi, she's got you. If you're looking for a, a retelling, she's got you. I mean, whatever your favorite trope is, Christina C. Jones will be there for you. And she has a book for that trope. So I highly recommend anything by Christina C. Jones. Definitely look her up. She's extremely prolific and she literally has a book for every trope imaginable. For prompt number two, Body Party, dive into the world of street lit and read your favorite or read a gritty love story. I have a few authors here that I would love to recommend when it comes to street lit. I am obsessed with Desiree. I feel that she has something that everyone can pretty much appreciate. She is a masterful storyteller and her books, her stories take are across like various books. They're very much involved in this world. Her attention to detail is phenomenal. Her character development is phenomenal. Uh, I think a great place to start is the Carter Boys or the Carter Girls series. That one will really take you to some places. I also really recommend her Moonchild series, which I'm currently reading right now. And I actually picked, picked one of the books for my TBR. And I'm super excited to finish the series. That's her newest series that I am obsessed with. But Desiree does great street lit. I'd also recommend Be Love. Be Love does fantastic street lit. Her characters are so rich, so fully fleshed out. You really like become immersed in the story. You Natavia is also very imaginative and uh, she she writes across all genres as well. I feel like every book of hers is different from the last, which I appreciate. Nako is another one who is the truth. I remember when I first discovered Nako, I think I want to what was the name of that book? I can't remember it off the top of my head, but I will put it right here. But essentially, it was about a woman who was getting out of prison after she had done time behind a man, basically taking the fall for him, only to come out and realize that he had completely moved on with his life, had a new boo, had a new family, and was keeping her kids from her. I mean, she was in prison for years, y'all, like 10 years. And she's coming out and she has nothing and she has to start over from scratch. And she feels like this man that she was like ride or die for and went to prison for completely just disregarded her and moved on with his life. And she thought that she was gonna come out and they were gonna be together and their family was gonna be together. together. And it's this gut-wrenching emotional journey of watching her pick up the pieces, find her strength, really level up, you know, begin to trust herself again, you know, begin to forgive him even as she, her eyes are open to who he really is, trying to move on, trying to find a job, trying to get back on her feet, trying to reconnect with her kids, finding new love. I mean, it was a phenomenal story. Is She the Reason by Nako? That was the first book I ever read by Nako and I was hooked and Nako just takes you on this spiritual, emotional, mental, oh, the journey, the journey that Nako takes us through with their characters is indescribable. You literally come away from a Nako novel feeling like a better person, which is crazy, but so real. And their street lit is just so legit. So those are some street lit recommendations. Moving on. 
Prompt number three, freak like me, vampires, aliens, and werewolves. Oh my, read a monster smut book, basically. <laughs> read a monster smut protagonist, uh, mm. read a monster smut love story featuring black protagonists. Now, this one was hard for me because I haven't really found a lot of monster smut with black protagonists, I'm not even gonna lie. But I did this thing where I searched it on Google and I came up with this whole list. So this can't really be a true recommendation because I haven't read most of these books. In fact, this is how I found the book that I picked for my TBR. So I can't truly, you know, put my stamp of approval behind these books. But I can say that uh, the author, a lot of these authors that I found on the list have come with rave reviews. So take that with what you will. So I specifically found a lot of vampire books like Succulents, The Paranormal Romance by Jade Royal that's on my TBR. I also found some other books uh, and some other authors. So I'm just gonna put a screen capture here and some of the uh, covers of the books. Again, I can't wholeheartedly recommend them because I haven't read most of these, but you know, I figured I would as well you know, put the search history that I looked into over here for those that are looking for more Monster Smut. And obviously in the comments, if you have read Monster Smut with Black protagonists that you love, then recommend me for sure. Okay, so moving on to prompt number four. Pony, read a Black sports romance. What I have been waiting for. <laughs> so, now if y'all know, then y'all know that I am obsessed with the uh, Love in the End Zone series by Christina C. Jones and Love Belvin. So they've come together and they partnered to write the series and I am freaking obsessed with it. I reread the series every year, y'all. That is how good this series is. I literally reread it yearly and I can't recommend it enough. Every single book is amazing, whether it's by Christina C. Jones or Love Belvin. You just get such an amazing experience from reading this. The characters are so well written the character development the storylines the things that happen you come to care for these characters and they're all in the same world and you get to see your favorite characters and like the newer books and kind of catch up with them and what they're doing and how they are and their families and their happily ever afters and how that's going there's a new angle with every book it's this sports world and it all takes place within this one football team, um, NFL. But there's, you know, with each different character, you get different angles and you get different story uh, storylines. And it's so fulfilling and enriching to the point where when I spoke with Love Belvin and Christina C. Jones earlier this year during quarantine pages, during my interviews with them, I literally was begging them, like, when are we gonna get another book in the series and they promised me that it would be coming before the end of the year so i am so excited and i'm just like constantly refreshing my amazon <laughs> my amazon page like searching like is the new book out but that is my number one recommendation for black sports romance so good if you've read other black sports romances that you love please please put the recommendations down below i feel like i've read some other ones i really enjoy the the books by Kennedy Ryan but I can't say that it's black love like black romance because I believe in one of the books the protagonist is biracial and the love interest is Caucasian so I can't put it in the black romance spectrum for sports romance but those are the other sports romances that I've enjoyed that have a little bit more diversity to them I'm trying to think if I know any more if I think of any more when I'm editing I will definitely post the the uh the covers right here moving on honey because my battery is blinking at me prop number five is red light special for those who aren't new to this but true to this reread your favorite black romance now y'all i already talked about this in my tbr video but i went through this period of time earlier this year especially during quarantine where i was rereading all of my favorite black romances and i just want to recommend some of them to y'all because I feel like y'all need these books in your lives. I mean, this is obvious. Anything by Love Belvin, but I especially really love her. I want to say Inconvenient Truth series with Ezra Carmichael, the BDSM pastor, and his love, Alexis Greer. I want to say that that's the name of the series. I'm not 100% sure. I reread the entire series. I reread it every year. Loved it. I also really love another series by her, which I will put right here. I believe it's the Wayward Love series. I also really love the Sadiq series by her. Anything by Love Belvin, really. And she has a new series out right now, but 
I haven't read it yet, so I'm waiting for all the books to come out, so that can also be added to my favorites list. I also reread, what did I reread, or what, what other books can I recommend? Ooh, Alexandria House has this novella series featuring three brothers that is absolutely amazing. I love it because the protagonists are older, so the brothers are older, so therefore the female protagonists are older. It just gave me everything. It gave me everything. So I will post those covers right here. Definitely check out Alexandria House. I also love Alexandria House's McLean Brothers series. I know I've talked about it before. Mwah. Impeccable. Impeccable. I also really love the Strickland Sister series by Alexandria House. You cannot go wrong with that. <laughs> There's another author that I don't haven't talked about much, but it's Nia Forrester, and I first found her with her book The Come Up which I still reread every year. I'm obsessed with that book. It basically takes place in the music industry and it's about this guy who's kind of the savant of a producer in the music industry and everyone wants to work with him. Uh, he works for this like all, well I don't know if it's all black but it's this record label that was started by this you know savant of a businessman and he started his own record label and so this titan works for him. I'm using all these big words but yes Jamal Turner he is yes he's the trusted right-hand man to music mo mogul Chris Skyf and he's po I can't read he's poised to become chief operating officer of his friend and mentors international recording conglomerate but while his career prospects have never been better Jamal is still plagued by the memories of his humble beginnings threatening to pull him back down just as he's on the come up Michaela Hughes knows who she is and where she comes from and she flat out refuses to allow working in the high-powered recording industry to change her or her most closely had held friendships. Okay, y'all. So my battery died, but I do not want to wait for it to charge. I really need to get another battery to finish this because I want to get this recommendations video up for y'all. So I just want to continue on my iPhone. Sorry that the quality is not as great. But I highly recommend On the Come Up by Nia Forrester and the follow-up, The Takedown. I also highly recommend her book afterwards. She also has a book called Snowflake that's really, really good. But she's basically built this whole world. She even has this one book that's about like mistresses and women who are bad girls and how they get their happily ever afters and what they deserve and you know how appearances can be deceiving and all that. I've read most of Nia Forrester's books. There's also Jacintha Howard or Jacintha Howard who has this whole series about these young adults who are in this rock, rock band that is called The Prototype, which is named after an outcast song. And each book follows a different member of the band and just how they find love. They're, you know, college aged. Love that series. So there are a lot of great books out there that I've read. Uh, it just depends on what you're interested in. I can definitely recommend something to you. Um, I want to wrap up this recommendations video because it's gotten entirely too long, but if you do have a question or another recommendation that I haven't mentioned, please put it in the comments. Also, if you are asking me for a, a recommendation for a specific trope or a specific kind of black romance, put that in the comments as well and I could definitely answer it because this video, I didn't want to make it too long because I'm already doing a series on my channel about black romance and indie black romances. So I will be, you know, putting way more of recommendations up just in general on my channel. But I have read a ton of black romance, specifically indie black romance. And this doesn't even touch the tip of the iceberg of the books that I've read and enjoyed. That brings us to the final prompt, which is to read the group book, The Reinvention of the Rose by Christina C. Jones, The Queen. So. On that note, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. <laughs> Are you guys liking my bob? I wanted a bob so bad. Sorry, I'm not looking into the camera. I wanted a bob so bad, so I just, I went in today and I just, you know, I took the plunge. I took the plunge. I'm obsessed with it. But it, anyways, I will catch y'all in my next video. Mwah! Bye! Let's get naked, naked readathon. Who is participating? Let me know what you'll be reading. I cannot wait.